up next on News Channel 32, it's that time of year again, shopping for school supplies without paying sales tax. We'll tell you which items are exempt and which are not. And a Jackson County man has been reunited with his dog, which had been stolen and sold for drug money and almost ended up in the fighting pit. Those stories and more, including sports, our Georgia journey, and the weekend weather forecast. News Channel 32 at 6 is next. Bargain. News for Northeast Georgia. This is News Channel 32 at 6. Good evening, I'm Chuck Moore. Here's what's happening in Northeast Georgia. A Tacoa man is $1 million richer tonight. It was one week ago when 51-year-old Stephen King stopped in at the Mountain Mart on Currahee Street. The former truck driver says he walked into the store, played the instant game Georgia's $500 million club, and won. That $20 scratch-off ticket is now worth $1 million. The father of three says he already has plans to put the money to good use. I just want to make sure my kids have everything they need. A couple of good friends I want to help out. And then I don't want to change it. I don't want to change my life because of this. Money's not everything. King adds that he hasn't had a vacation in a really long time, so he plans to spend a couple of weeks at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Mr. King might be spending some of that money without paying sales tax. This is the weekend when you can buy certain items without the usual sales tax. But before heading out to take advantage of the tax-free holiday, you might want to double-check to see what's on the tax-free list and what's not. News Channel 32's Amelia Hines took a trip to the store today to see what didn't rig up tax-free. For the last five years, Georgia shoppers have enjoyed getting a tax-free weekend before heading back to school. And by now, most of us know school supplies like pencils, paper, and notebooks are tax-free. But some items that may be on your school supply list are not tax-exempt. Okay, I thought batteries were, so, because, you know, need them for calculators and stuff like that. Video games like this aren't tax-free, but webcams are. If you plan on buying a laptop computer this year, they're tax-free as long as they're under 15 hundred dollars and if you want to buy a mouse or a USB to go along with it they're tax-free too but it's gonna cost you a little tax to protect it unfortunately Harry Potter's got tax as far as books go it depends on what you want a dictionary and a thesaurus are tax exempt but other books aren't for other items like backpacks clothes and electronics that you're not sure about most stores will have staff to help you out and we have a comprehensive list at all our registers and our team members have it to answer any of our guest questions if you want to save yourself a little time before you head out to catch back to school deals take a look at the list before you leave home in gainesville amelia hines news channel 32 you can visit the Georgia Department of Revenue's website to get a full list of exempt and non-exempt items. That website is etax.dor.ga.gov. A link will also be in our story on WNEG32.com. A pet store in Tacoa has been shut down. This morning, the city marshal received a complaint that the conditions at Sandy's Pets were unbearable. Ken Cox says this is not the first complaint his office has received about the store on Collins Road. We came in and the smell was stifling. Uh, we checked. There are numerous dogs back in the back in an open pen, feces everywhere. The smell was horrible. There's a, a room with birds, and the birds, a lot of feathers were off of them. There were droppings all over the floor, seeds scattered everywhere. It was just a, it was just a mess. Cox also got animal control and the State Department of Agriculture involved to assess the situation. Based on their findings, the city marshal delivered a letter to the store owners ordering them to shut down. In the interest of public health, the carpet must be removed and replaced with tiles, and the store must be given a general cleaning. In addition, every dog and bird must be examined by a veterinarian. Once the owners complete their task, animal control must inspect the store to determine when it can reopen. A Jackson County man and his dog have been reunited after the dog was stolen three weeks ago in Arcade. Investigators with the Arcade Police Department say there's reason to believe the dog was sold for drugs and then intended for dog fighting. News Channel 32's Alicia Searle has more on the story. 
James Wisnat was afraid he'd never see this face again. I hunted, hunted all over the world. Wisnat searched for Max, his purebred boxer, for more than three weeks. After filing a report with the Arcade Police Department stating his grandson stole the dog while he wasn't home. And according to investigator Greg Maddox, he has reason to believe the dog could have been sold for cocaine and then later fought in a dog fighting arena. He don't know about fighting, and I figured they'd put him fighting and kill him. That's what we're worried about. Somebody. But those worries came to an end after Wisnat's son told him he knew where the dog was. But Max's whereabouts came at a small price. And my son told me ten dollars for gas and a hundred dollars to tell me. So Wisnat paid one hundred and ten dollars to have his son tell him the dog was about twenty miles away at a house in Athens. And that's exactly where Maddox found him. I felt good. Um, pets are great for all people, but as we know, the elderly really benefit emotionally, psychologically, physically from having pets. And to deprive this from Mr. Wisnat was it was really eating at me. I was happy when I found him. <laughs> Real happy. You was happy too, weren't you, Max? Huh? And while these men couldn't be happier, Max is home safe. They're still looking for Wisnat's grandson, 20-year-old James Raymond Mathis, Jr. He's now wanted in four jurisdictions. But as Max shows his love, it's just as enough for James Wisnat. In Jackson County, Alicia Searle, News Channel 32. If you have any information on James Raymond Mathis, Jr., you're asked to call the Arcade Police Department at 706-367-1821. Governor Purdue named a three-member panel today to investigate Towns County Sheriff Rudy Eller. Eller was arrested Tuesday for allegedly covering up a shooting by his chief deputy who was embroiled in a love triangle. Georgia Attorney General Thurbert Baker, Cherokee County Sheriff Roger Garrison, and Walker County Sheriff Steve Wilson will report back to Purdue within 30 days on whether Eller should be suspended. The Minneapolis fire chief is calling it a miracle that more people weren't killed and injured in Wednesday's bridge collapse. Divers have been braving the swirling currents in the murky Mississippi River waters as they search for the remaining victims. We get the latest in this report from CBS. Authorities know some, possibly all, of the missing victims from Wednesday's Minneapolis bridge collapse are entombed in submerged cars. But recovering them from the treacherous Mississippi River is proving to be dangerous and slow. This morning, we identified five vehicles submerged we cleared four of the vehicles with no victims found in any of those four vehicles. Teams of divers are taking turns examining targets identified by side scan sonar. However, some targets could turn out to be debris or empty cars. An estimated 60 vehicles plunged into the river. Several victims have now been identified, including 60-year-old Sherry Ingebretson and 32-year-old Julia Blackhawk. While the recovery efforts pushed forward, First Lady Laura Bush toured the devastation and thanked first responders for their efforts. Thanks so much. Good to see you. Finding the cause of this disaster could take up to a year. Investigators plan to gather as many pieces of the bridge as possible and put it back together like one giant jigsaw puzzle. Investigators will also be relying heavily on this video captured by the Army Corps of Engineers to try to figure out why the bridge crumbled. Metal fatigue, heavy traffic, and corrosion are among the causes being explored. As the search for answers begins, others searched for solace. Some dropped flowers into the Mississippi River in memory of those who died here. Gwen Belton, CBS News, Minneapolis. Our Georgia journey is coming up next on News Channel 32. We're going to Maysville to visit a most unusual auto parts store. All the parts are for the same car. Stay with us. Hey, Bo Jangle. Snowball Building Supplies, Mize Road to Coa presents Georgia Journeys, a weekly profile of people and places making good news in Northeast Georgia. These days, it's rare to see cars made in the 80s out on the streets. But a Maysville business is helping people keep cars that are 80 years old running and looking just like new. It's not your average auto parts store, as News Channel 32 Scott Myrig found out in this week's Georgia Journey. Mike Butcher's love of Model A Fords started long before he and his family 
came to America. Oh, I had a 29 Phaeton back in South Africa in about 19 or late 60s. But his love of this classic car grew stronger when he got here. When he was restoring a friend's Model A, Mike realized he could start a business just selling the parts. Just the restoration itself um, literally turned into a business. That business became Mike's Affordable in Maysville. It's one of the largest suppliers of Model A parts in the country. Some of the time you get to put stuff together and some of the times you have to take stuff apart. And it's sometimes really confusing. The family business has 20,000 customers and the potential for many more. Mike thinks half a million Model A's are still around, some just waiting to be discovered. Wouldn't it be lovely if Model A's had some kind of little beeper on them and if you didn't see them in a barn, they'd beep as you went past so you'd be able to find them. <laughs> One thing Mike doesn't have trouble finding are parts. There are over 5,000 of them at his store. Some are originals he restores. Common items, fan belts, for instance. And others are specially made. With these parts, Model A owners can keep the 80-year-old cars. They love working. It's just the fun. And, and, and to be American, to have a Model A, you know, it's just... It's just incredible feeling about it. With more people discovering the magic of the Model A every day, there will be plenty of old cars to make new again. In Maysville, Scott Myrick, News Channel 32. One old Model A that Mike helps keep running is Georgia Tech's Ramblin' Wreck. The weekend weather forecast is coming up on News Channel 32. And in Health Watch, the healing power of music. Some say it can do wonders for seriously disabled people. We'll show you when News Channel 32 continues. In Health Watch, a catchy tune can lift your spirits, but it can do a lot more than that. One stroke patient is walking, talking, and even singing, and his doctors credit music therapy. Dr. Malika Marshall has the story. From the opening bars, you'd never know what Trevor Gibbons has been through. But if you listen to his lyrics, you might get a clue. Gibbons suffered a stroke while working on a window, fell four stories, and landed flat on his back. In the hospital for almost a year, unable to speak or barely even move. Depressed. Very depressed. Sad. Gibbons had ended up at Beth Abraham Rehab Center in the Bronx, pioneers in the field of music therapy. The program started more than 25 years ago with music therapists moving a piano from room to room, helping patients along the way. It was far from a professional setup like this one, but the idea to take the therapy program to the next level wasn't far off. Today, stroke patients and those with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's too all use this unique high-tech digital recording studio, not just to make music, but to make breakthroughs. In the studio, the music can help bring back old memories and tap into language skills buried by injury or disease. They're able to retrieve words e much easier than if they were just to do speech therapy, for example by itself. Never expected to recover, Gibbons has now penned more than 400 songs, performed at Lincoln Center, and cut two CDs. Living proof of the power of music. Dr. Malika Marshall, CBS News. A typical 3-H day in Northeast Georgia, hazy, hot, and humid. Cody Chaffins is at the weather board with details. And it looks to be the same way throughout the weekend, but some parts of our viewing area are getting a very rough start to that weekend. First, we'll take a look at the way it is right now at our station. About 89 degrees, wind coming from the east at 3 miles per hour. Humidity is at 45%, and it feels like 92, another hot day in northeast Georgia. Take a look at some temperatures around the area. And like we said, 89 in Sakoa, 92 partly cloudy in Hartwell, 90 in Elberton, and partly cloudy, 91 in Athens and Fair, 90 in Fair in Gainesville as well. More clouds in Dahlonega and then Hiawassee. There again, we see another thunderstorm that has popped up and near the Georgia-North Carolina border. And we'll look at it right here on our radar. And you see it's right over here, right near Georgia's highest point, Brasstown Bald. A very severe thunderstorm at the moment. A lot of lightning, a lot of gusty winds, and also this one is capable of producing some hail. Of, may also produce up to an inch of rain within the hour. It's moving to the south-southwest 
at about five or to 10 miles per hour. And you'll see another view of it there. And also some spotty showers throughout North Carolina, but this one pretty severe. As we take a look at our regional satellite radar, the only other parts of Georgia getting a lot of rain are Savannah and the, kind of the Hilton Head area. As you see that band stretching across the southwest or southeast corner of the state, rather. And you take a look at our 24-hour forecast. Should be a pretty nice Saturday for you. You don't see any of that green stuff over our area, but that's not, again, to discount those afternoon thunderstorms. They still could be there, 48-hour forecast. And we see a little bit of that light green rain. A possibility for tonight should get down, get down to 69 degrees. Chance of thunderstorms is at 20%. The sun will set tonight at 832. Come up tomorrow, 643. For tomorrow should be a beautiful day. High of 91, low of 71. And enjoy that 91 because look, there it disappears. 95 for early parts of next week and Sunday. So we thought 91 was hot with the humidity, but it's going to get even hotter for the early parts of next week. August is here. Thanks, Cody. Sports is next on News Channel 32. Former Bulldogs tennis star John Isner has made it to the semifinals of our professional championship. Jeff Sharon has that and much more coming up in sports next. They say when life gives you a lemon. Hello, everybody. David Austin along with Michelle Austin and Robert Mitchum. We had a good time last week finding all about Alaska. And you never know who's going to show up on the Billy Dilworth Show, right, Michelle? Well, that's right. And uh, we want to invite you to tune in this Saturday night, 7 and 11. Billy will be back. The Billy Dilworth Show right here on News Channel 32. Don't miss it. A lot of fun waiting for you every Saturday night at 7 and 11. Jeff Sharon's here with sports. And today we open with tennis yet again, and with very good reason. John Isner found himself in the quarterfinals of the Leg Mason Tennis Tournament in Washington, D.C. this afternoon, facing Tommy Haas, the second seed and world number 12. First set, Isner puts the lid on the set with the ace, takes that set 6-4. Haas would win the second set 7-6. They go to another tiebreaker in the third set, and then Haas in the far court now with the shot coming up, it's going to go wide, and that opens the door for Isner. And then the six foot nine Bulldog ends it with the power serve. Haas can't return it. And John Isner, ranked number 416 in the world, that's going to change. He's going to the semifinals tomorrow in D.C. As we creep closer to the beginning of college football season, the preseason polls are coming out. The first one out is the USA Today coaches poll, and here's a look at the top five. Southern Cal took 45 of 60 first place votes. They are the clear number one in the preseason. Two SEC squads then follow, LSU at number two, and the defending national champs, the Florida Gators at number three, Texas at four, Michigan at five. Taking a look at some other notables, Ohio State landing at number 10 a year after taking the number one ranking all the way to the national championship game. Three SEC teams in a row from 13 to 15, led by the Dogs at the Baker's Dozen spot, followed by Auburn and Tennessee. One other SEC team in the top 25, that's Arkansas at number 20. Tech and Clemson received votes, but failed to crack the top 25. Late end to the Braves game last night. Check this out. Here in the eighth inning, Mike Lamb with the game-tying grand slam in the pinch hit. How about that? That makes it 9-9. We go to extra innings. 11-9 Astros in the 12th, but then one on for Matt Diaz. He hits the home run to left and ties this thing again at 11. 14th inning, though, in the top of the inning. Pinch hitter Jason Jennings, the two-out RBI single. The Braves scored 12 the last two nights and won those games tonight. They score 11 and lose 12 to 11 in 14 innings. They start another home set with Colorado Rockies coming up tonight. NASCAR Nextel Cup takes a trip to Pocono this Sunday for the Pennsylvania 500. Of course, Tony Stewart took the win at Indy last week. He's still fifth in the standings behind Jeff Gordon, but he may be ready to close in on the Rainbow Warrior. We get the details in NASCAR Minute. <laughs> For the second time in his career, Tony Stewart won the Brickyard 400 last Sunday. For a local kid who grew up watching his heroes drive at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, delivering a win at that track is a big deal. 
I'm not going to say it's my favorite race of the year, but it's probably my most important race of the year. Um, I get more nervous and more amped up for this race than I do even the Daytona 500, but uh, it's hard not to when it's your home track. And, uh, you know, this is, you know, my family's all here during the race. My closest friends are here for this race. Um, and, and this is a track that everybody knows who I am here. Uh, you know, whether they like me or dislike me, everybody knows who I am when I'm here. So, um, you know, this is, this is the one race on the circuit that, uh, you know, if, if I could only win one race a year, this is the one I would pick. When Stewart won the Brickyard 400 in 2005, he went on to win his second cup championship. So the 36-year-old driver is hopeful that history will repeat itself. With a NASCAR Minute, I'm Larry Smith. Coming up next, our scouting report, Cedar Shoals went eight and two last year, but it was the two that hurt the most. Both losses to Clark Central. Can they get past the Glads and into the playoffs this year? Let's find out when News Channel 32 returns. Do you have the Classic City Championship in Athens is one of the most heated rivalries in the state, but it's a matchup that the Cedar Shoals Jaguars would rather not think about. The Jags went 0-2 against crosstown rival Clark Central last year, and the second and most important loss kept them out of the state playoffs. News Channel 32's Cody Chaffins tells us that the Jaguars coach is trying to move forward, but still feels the sting from last season. Anytime you, you're going to lose to the crosstown rival, that's going to be a disappointment. Uh, when you lose to them twice, that's going to be a tragedy. And when the second one keeps you from playing on after you've won the sub-region and you feel like you are one of the better teams out of the region and you're sitting at home in week 11, uh, that's a catastrophe. That's how Scott Wilkins described Cedar Shoals 8-2 and 2006 season. And while the results may have been catastrophic, the coach has to put all that behind him can't cry over spilt milk we didn't get the job done and uh, so we look ahead not back looking ahead to 2007 the Jaguars returned some very talented players including quarterback Trent McGuire and veteran players on the offensive and defensive lines but Wilkins feels that there's one more aspect to his team this year that losses like the two to Clark Central last year helped to build chemistry that's a a real intangible that you can't you can't do drills to develop uh, you can't take a supplement that's going to help it grow it's either something that you have or that you don't I, I feel real good about this football team's chemistry not only does Cedar Shoals have talent this year but they have a togetherness that their 14 year head coach feels good about and his plans for getting past those hated gladiators this year Let's get far enough ahead with, uh, in the game that, that I can't mess it up. In Athens, Cody Chapins, News Channel 32 Sports. Still hard to believe that an 8-2 and two record kept Cedar Shoals out of the playoffs, but that's what happens when you play in a region where you have 14 other teams. Going into last year, Scott Wilkins was 8-6 and six against his cross down rival. Of course, he's now at 500 against the Glads. Clark Central leads the overall series with Cedar 26-14. The two teams will meet up again in Week 2 at Billy Henderson Stadium. We're staying in the Athens area on Monday and heading down to North Oconee. The Titans really broke out last year going 7-3 in a non-region schedule. A huge improvement from the previous two years when they were a combined 1-19. We'll see if they can continue their newfound success on Monday's scouting report. And after we visit the Titans, we then head a little further south on Hog Mountain Road to Oconee County on Tuesday. Then we go back north on Wednesday to check in with Coach Randall Evans and the Red Raiders of Madison County. Thursday, we head up into the mountains to see what the Raven County Wildcats are up to. And then we finish next week with new head coach Blair Armstrong and the Banks County Leopards. We are already, actually by next week, by the middle of next week, we will be more than halfway through our journey throughout Northeast Georgia with scouting reports. Does it feel like it yet? Uh, well, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's been, it's been a wild ride. It's been a much more wild ride for you, Cody. I know that much. All around the area. <laughs> We're only halfway there. <laughs> and it's hot. And it's hot. And it, it pretty strong thunderstorms in our area today, but just very small and just isolated. Just that one. Just that yeah. one up by high was. Right. And that was good news that it was just that one, but right. that, that one was very strong. All right. That's what's happening in Northeast Georgia. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back at 11 o'clock. See you then.
checked out our website, WNEG32.com, you can post your local event, check out your favorite show, or see what's playing at the movies. Plus, get the latest local news, sports, and weather. Make us your homepage, WNEG32.com. 